we are going to go through the process of doing the QuickBooks desktop to report integration method, which is importing with Excel templates that are generated under reports within QuickBooks Desktop. You will need to have QuickBooks Desktop version 2018 or newer in order for this to work. Please make sure before running the reports that you have all your vendors set up in QuickBooks correctly. They all have a name, address, tax ID, Mark 1099 eligible, that the payments have been mapped correctly in your QuickBooks Desktop for whichever form type you are doing importing for, whether that's the miscellaneous or the NEC form. To map those payments, you would go to vendors, 1099 forms, print e-file 1099 forms, click yes on the pop-up. And then from here is where you will map the payments for example, if we wanted to do the miscellaneous, you would select how many other vendors you have. You wanna make sure the ones you want mapped for the miscellaneous form are checked. The ones you do not are not. Click continue, continue. On this page, which is where you're mapping the payments, typically it's gonna automatically show omit these payments from tax 1099. I have already mapped these before creating this video, which is why it shows already box one, but you will see the list of options for boxes to input the data into for the 1099 miscellaneous form. You wanna make sure to choose whichever box you want that payment to go in, and it, you'll do it for each payment that would be listed here. Then click continue, 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 save and close. To get started doing the import process with the 1099 reports, you will, you will have wanted to log into your QuickBooks and be in the company that you are doing the import for. Then you will come to reports, vendors and payables, sorry. vendor contact list, and this little box will pop up. You will want to customize report and make sure that all of the options needed are checked. The options that are automatically checked, you wanna make sure that you do not uncheck any of those. And then you just wanna make sure that you check all of the other options that should be checked for this report, which would be first name, middle initial, last name, company. If main phone is not checked, you wanna check that. Main email. Bill from street one, street two, city, state, zip code, country, tax ID eligible for 1099. And that should be all, but I always suggest going back through and making sure that you did not overlook any so it should be, apart from the ones automatically checked, you should check company, first, middle, last name, main email, bill from street one, street two, city, state, zip, country, tax ID and eligible for 1099. Once all of those are checked, then you can click OK. Then you will come here to this Excel box, 
click this down arrow, click create new worksheet. Make sure create new worksheet and a new workbook is checked. Click export. And it will export all of the vendors that have been mapped and set up correctly and the payments in the QuickBooks desktop. In this export, you wanna make sure that you see two tabs or two sheets. The first one should be this QuickBooks desktop export tips. The second one will say sheet one. If for some reason you do not have this first tab or first sheet, then you will want to add a sheet label it sheet one and make sure the sheet that has the actual data in it is labeled sheet two in that situation. And then save it and proceed with doing the next report. Please make sure that you do not change any of the vendor headings, that you do not delete any columns or headers from the sheet. You can remove vendors that are listed here if you do not wish for them to actually be uploaded into tax 1099 you just want to make sure that you delete all data from the line that they exist in all the way through and we want to make sure sorry we want to make sure that eligible for 1099 here says yes You can leave it as book two, but both reports that you export are gonna be labeled book two. So we do suggest saving it with a different name. You can click save as, and this could be the vendor, sorry, vendor list. And then you can close that out or just minimize it if you prefer. Next, you will need to run the next report. So you will go to reports, vendors and payables, 1099 summary. Where it says last calendar year, you want to actually put this calendar year? Well, actually, now that we are in 2022, you will want it to be last calendar year for 2021. If you were doing data for 2022, then you would choose this calendar year. But since the data will be coming from 2021, you will want to leave it as last calendar year. And then this arrow right here is where you decide whether you're gonna do the miscellaneous or the NEC form type. Then come to this Excel box, click create new worksheet. Make sure this top option is checked and in new workbook, then click export. And this is the 1099 summary report. Again, there should be that first sheet. If you do not have it, add a sheet, label it sheet one, and the data should be sheet two. Do not delete any headers or any columns. You can edit amounts if you need to, as well as you should be able to add a vendor in here if you don't see them. You just wanna make sure that they are added above this total line and this line here or you can fix it in your QuickBooks and rerun the report. And then save it as 1099 summary, or however you want to label it. Next, you will want to go to tax1099.com and log into your tax1099 account with your email and password. Then come to import, QuickBooks desktop. You can go through this workflow questions, but since you are doing the 1099 to report method, 
you can click I'm an existing client and exit. Then scroll down to the bottom option, QuickBooks 1099 Excel import. On this page, you will select the payer that you are importing the data for from your QuickBooks desktop. And you will need to select the tax year. Then select the form type. You will wanna make sure that you select the correct form type for whichever form you selected when you ran the 1099 summary report. Otherwise, you will get a pop-up message saying that the Excel template is in the wrong format. And that means that you're not importing for the correct form type. Since I did miscellaneous, I will select that and then I will upload my vendor contact list. And then upload my 1099 summary. And you wanna make sure both boxes reach 100% and this turns green, the 100% and the title. If you were doing corrections, you could check this box. Otherwise, click next. Now you are on the import grid. This is the halfway process of doing the integration. If you were to just leave this page, the data would not be here if you came back to this page or if you were making any changes to vendors that have red dots and just left this page. When you come back to do this again, you would have to redo all of the edits that you made. So, on this page, we wanna make sure that all of the vendors have green dots on the left of their name, and we want the payer to have a green dot as well. This pair has a yellow or orange dot, meaning that there's errors in the recipient data. If this dot was red too, that would mean something in the payer is missing, and you could click on the payer name, and it would pull up the profile so you can edit their information. For the recipients, you will click on their name, and it will pull up their profile. And then whatever information may be missing from the profile for that vendor, you will need to add. As you can see, this is marked as individual. So I wanna change it to business. So this is Johnson Co and add the address. As you can see, when I add valid acceptable information into the field, it turns white. This client recipient ID, for the purposes of this video, I am using my personal test account and I am an enterprise account that is API and it is client recipient ID driven. So for those types of accounts, a client recipient ID is required. If you are not that account type, it should not possibly be listed in the profile, but if it is, it won't be required and it won't be read for you. So you will not have to complete that field. If you see any other data that you just need to edit that you know is incorrect, you can do that. Once you're ready, click update. And then you can see this vendors dot turned green. If you need to change the amount or the box the amount is being reported in. You can come over here and click edit. It will open these two fields up so you can make the changes you need to and then click update. If you are importing multiple pages of data and you wanna see just the vendors that have red dots, you can come to this filter and select this by the red dot and click filter. And what that will do is filter the pages to just show you the vendors with the red dot only. Once you fix all of those vendors, you would come back to this filter and then click clear and it will clear out that filter and then all of the vendors will display. We do suggest if you are importing a lot of data and you have quite a bit of vendors with red dots, it's possible that if you have to spend a lot of time on this page trying to fix those errors, you may be kicked out. And if you're kicked out, you would have to do 
the upload of the templates again, and then any edits you made, you would have to do again. So if there is a large number of vendors that you need to make edits for, we suggest either fixing that in the reports or fixing it in your QuickBooks, rerunning the reports, and then redoing the upload, or you can export to Excel after selecting all. It will export all of the data to Excel. You can fix the information in that Excel template and then go to import Excel spreadsheet and upload it that way. Otherwise, if you fix all of the information on this import grid and all of your dots are green, you can click select all, which will select all pages and then click next. At this point, all of the information has been successfully uploaded into your tax 1099 account. If you were to leave the select forms or view edit submit page, then you came back to this page, you could use the top drop down menus to select the needed information and the forms would pull up for you to review and continue to submit. We do suggest even though you may have reviewed the data in your QuickBooks, you may have looked at the data in the templates and even on the import grid, we still suggest that once the data has actually been successfully uploaded to this page, that customers still review the data to verify that it's accurate before they submit the forms. There are multiple ways that that can be done. You can come to the right of a vendor under action and click on view. This will pull up a PDF preview copy that you can look at and verify the data for that vendor is accurate and the amount and everything within the form is accurate. And you could do that for each vendor. You may also choose select all and choose export to Excel. That will export all of the data into a single Excel template where you have all the data in one file and you can go through the information that way if you need to make any changes. If it's a small number of vendors, you can just edit those vendors here on this page or you can delete this upload, make the changes in that exported Excel file and then upload that in import Excel spreadsheet to get the fixed data and the other forms uploaded again. You can also do download multiple PDF, which would give you a zip file that contains individual files per form. And you can look at the PDFs and review the information that way as well. Once you are ready to proceed, you can select to have a USPS or email recipients their copies. You can also select state filing on this page, select all of the forms and then click next. And that will take you to the payment page where you will be able to pay and submit the forms in the account and on their scheduled date, they will e-file with the IRS. If you have another company within that same QuickBooks account or another one to upload using this method, you can go to that company or that new QuickBooks account and do the same process to run those reports and upload them into tax1099.com. This is the process for doing the 1099 QuickBooks desktop to report method. Thank you for your time.